This morning, our ladies are here, all four of them are here and seated. We're going to be talking about topical issues, making the news in the country like we always do on big issues. Now, uh, this week has had a lot of news headlines. In fact, the last few weeks have had a lot of news headlines. Top amongst them has been the Democracy Hub demonstration, arrest and detention thereof, the appearance before the court, and the fact that all the protesters who were brought before the courts have been denied bail. Yesterday, we heard from some of their lawyers who told us that some of them are unwell. They have been taken to the police hospital. One of them is pregnant and is still on remand. And they are to reappear, at least 11 of them are to reappear before the courts today at 1 p.m. We will talk to their lawyers to find out um, what the latest is, especially how the people who are unwell and I'm, uh, the police hospital are doing, and those of them who are unwell but are still in police custody and have been denied access to medication from their family members <clears throat> are also doing. Also, we're going to be talking about the audit of the voters' register, which was led or has been led by the National Democratic Congress. Alan Chamanting, the leader of the Movement for Change and Alliance for Revolutionary Change, has joined the call for an audit and he's made some recommendations on how this audit should be done successfully to the benefit of all stakeholders and Ghanaians at large. I'd like to um, first acknowledge our guests who are here and then we'll set the ball rolling. This show is interactive and so you can connect with us online with the hashtag TV3 New Day. You can send me your messages on X. I'll read them as we go. First, Ellen is here, Ellen Amadakum, member of the NPP communications team. Good morning, Ellen. Hi, good morning. You're welcome. You. Today you're fully branded. I've been fully branded for a few For a months. while. I see. I think I don't think I've seen the full regalia <laughs> from the baseball cap to the necklace. That is a necklace or a pendant. Uh, whichever way. Yeah, yeah it's, I, I haven't seen the full thing. Well, you're welcome to the show. Good to have you. Thank, Thank you. you. Also in the yeah. house, Nanaya Achimpim Jantua, former CPP General Secretary. Good morning, Nanaya. Hi. Great to see you again. Why is this in Yes. Yes, today I'm sitting here. <laughs> Do you want to sit beside me? Any reason. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's just for technical reasons. We're usually three, and so our cameras are able to capture us a certain way. But because we are uh, five, today we are five. So mm, we've, we, we've had to, yes, we've had to rearrange, but we're, it's all good. It's great to have you. Great to see Welcome you. Welcome to the show. Seen you for a while. Yes. But I'm back. Hey, nice. <laughs> <laughs> also in the studio this morning, Beatrice Annan, deputy spokesperson for the John Mahama campaign team, is here. Morning, Beatrice. Good morning, love. Great to have you. As always. I'm and happy finally, Rodlin Imuro Iyana, member Alliance for Revolutionary Change, is here. Good morning, Rodlin. Good morning, Shako. Great to have you. Great to be here. Now, too. before we get into our conversation um, with our panel in studio, we have seen that the protesters have petitioned Shraj. We have just um, a few highlights of the protesters' uh, petition to Shraj to share with us. And then we will speak to one of their lawyers and we'll begin the conversation in studio. So here are some highlights. Denying protesters food and water violates their right to life guaranteed under Article 13 of the 1992 Constitution. Arresting, spreading, and concealing of the protesters without any notice to their lawyers and relatives of their whereabouts amounts to kidnapping, contrary to Section 89 of the Criminal Offenses Act. Then, the smuggling of protesters to court in Accra without adequate notice to their lawyers, violates fair trial rules guaranteed under Article 19 of the Constitution. Also, the Commission makes um, a finding, this, these are their demands, that the Commission should make a finding that, one, the rights and freedoms of the protesters were violated. Two, the police conduct, including unlawful arrest, <coughs> unlawful detention, detention without food, and violation of the right to counsel amounts to unprofessional conduct. And finally, their demand also is that the Commission immediately takes steps, including legal action, to ensure that the violations cease and the police officers are dealt with by law. 
All right. These are some demands uh, to Shiraj. We're joined on the phone lines now by lawyer Timothy Selikem Donko. He's a lawyer for the Democracy Hub protesters. Good morning, lawyer. Thank you for joining us on the show. First, can you tell us how the, the protesters who are unwell, um, Oliver and another, who are currently at the police hospital are doing? Uh, are, they, are they better? Yes, yes so, so they are responding to treatment capacity. Uh, Oliver's situation has uh, improved uh, far better than the state in which he was when the police uh, denied him medical treatment. That was late afternoon, two days ago. Okay. We're happy to hear that he's doing better. We're also told that some of the protesters, uh, one of them has tetanus, another has a kidney um, disease, one pregnant woman, and another who has another illness, were all denied medical care and access to yes. their medicines when their family members brought them. Is this true? And have they been allowed to receive their medication now? No, they've not. I don't have any update as to whether the police have allowed it. Can you tell us what reason the police gave when you initially were updated about why they were not allowed to receive their medication from family members? Yes, so, so the usual uh, response is that there's a order from above that no person should be allowed to, to, to talk to the protesters while they are uh, detained. And the police are unable to verify or authenticate the quality and the wholesomeness of the drugs that have been presented, so they are unable to take it and then administer it. And some are even in denial of the fact that the allegations of health care issues are not, are not um, the case, that we are only manufacturing facts to get the protected out of out of court. Hmm. Okay, can you tell us about the pregnant lady as well? How is she? Yes, she, she, she's very well and, 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 and uh, she's in good spirits. Uh, uh, not that it's the dish respond duty for her health. Uh, we cannot uh, because we don't have uh, a laser penetrating eye to be able to know the condition in which she is uh, uh, in all senses of the word. You know, but uh, as we can, if you peruse her senses of all, uh, she appears to be doing well. She appears to be doing well. All right. We're... I'd like to say we're happy to hear. Well, we're glad she's, she's doing all right. But, of course, we're, we're concerned about the fact that she's still, um, she's still been held. Yes, she's, yeah. she's still yeah, being detained. We are continuing petitioning the United Nations uh, Human Rights Council, um, the Committee for the United Nations Convention on Child uh, Rights. We are currently on our way to the to Parliament House uh, to notify the Ministry of Gender and the MP responsible and the Parliamentary women corporate. Uh, the case is very strong that uh, the pregnant woman is released. Let's, let's let go. All right. Now, we, we saw that you petitioned Shiraj yesterday. Have you received a response? So, we do receive response in terms of the uh, uh, better, but they've acknowledged the of, of, of the petition. And then they informed us that they will immediately uh, take steps to ensure that the case management conference is set up and the matter is so we are waiting for that better response from them, but they've acknowledged receipts uh, of, of, of the petition. They've acknowledged receipts, but you're waiting for a, a proper response. All right. And before yes. before we let you go, we know that you have to reappear in court today. What will happen today in court? Yes, we, we, we await the, the ruling of the court. The court has just came to rule on the, the bill application that was put So that is basically the business for today. Uh, in other matters, we are, we are continuing going to the, the High Court uh, to repeat the bail application going on behalf of those protesters whose uh, bail applications were denied by the Texas Court and also to repeat the human rights action. Uh, we are exploring uh, other alternative therapies, including bringing disciplinary action against the Attorney General and the Federal General. All right. Thank you so much for talking to us. And um, we've been talking to lawyer for the protesters. He's been speaking to us about exactly you know, what's going on, updates and so on. I know that uh, his connection was a little bad. So some of the things he said, we couldn't hear him very clearly in studio. We apologize for that. But I have just spoken to 
Timothy Selikem Donko, lawyer for Democracy Hub protesters. We'll come straight to our in studio discussion now. Um, ladies. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. Yeah, that will be all for this morning. Thank you. We will call you again and um, hopefully we'll have more updates from there. Let me begin with you, Beatrice. I've seen that you've been, at least on Facebook, you've been very vocal about the arrest of the protesters. And I've seen your hashtags, um, Free the Citizens now yeah i i think that it's a bit overwhelming for me it's a very sad situation and i don't even know where to start and how to describe this whole thing but it shows you how nanado has a dictatorial tendency the president is never democratic and it's so sad that the most violent demonstration where human beings died in this country was led by Nanadu, which is the Kumi Preku demonstration. In fact, he only rose to fame because of that demonstration. And you have protesters protested. Nobody has died. No property lost. And they have just not been arrested, but they have further been remanded. You see, the record must reflect that Nanado is the only president who has re eroded all our democratic gains. All our democratic gains. Every democratic gain we have made in the past, as from the time this country was founded till now, in eight years, the MPP government has eroded not just the democratic gains, but our economic gains. What are the young people asking for? We must begin to ask why the protest. These young people are not politically aligned. It is not a demonstration organized by the NDC for you to say that you are punishing your political opponent. These guys criticize the NDC, they criticize the MPP. Some of them are even calling for a third force. And they are saying that they want to do something outside the NDC MPP. These guys are saying that government officials wound to me the Kumasi mayor, Charles Ni Tego Tego, at Taiko Tego, at the office of the president. And government officials are engaged in Galamse. They are destroying our water bodies. And so we will use Nkrumah's birthday to tell the government that we all risk dying because children are being born with a lot of deformities. People are having to have a lot of kidney issues that government even says they do not have money to repair kidney machines. And at very regular intervals, Kolebu keeps closing the dialysis center and people keep dying. What was their crime? That's what they protested. And I, I've heard people say that, you know what, when they were protesting, they destroyed public property. In fact, government communicators even put out lies that 10 people died because they blocked the road. The Ghana Ambulance Service has come out to debunk all those lies of government. And so because of that, they've been arrested. I think, let me say that, whether or not the protesters destroyed public properties, whether or not they protested without order, whether or not they breached any laws, they will have their day in court. And then the substantive offense will be proved against them or otherwise. But there is no legal justification for you to arrest these protesters not grant them bail and even take them to court and be remanded for two weeks. 39 people, some of them, even by their addressing, you could see who wears a kaftan, white kaftan, blue black kaftan to a demonstration. And then you just do a swoop. The police has, I mean, they breach their fundamental right to having a lawyer. In fact, if you went to a proper law school, and you were taught by a professor like Kumado. One of the things you'll be told is that when you are arrested by the police, you can say that you have a right to any lawyer of your choice. And Professor Kumado will even joke that if he was arrested, he will say he wants Chikata. And then we'll all laugh 
because it is to paint the picture to you that if you tell the police that you want a particular lawyer, they are obliged to give you that. The police have taken the statements of these protesters without their lawyer being present. By the next time you hear, they will tell you they've extracted confession statements. In the videos you've been seeing, people are being slapped. People are saying that they are being starved. They, they've not been given food, water. People have not been, what is happening in our country? And I've heard people say that, oh, some of them went into altercation with the police and yes. everything. So some, some, some of the comments that have come out about why the arrest might have happened, uh, some of the videos we've seen of some of the protesters taking out keys from police vehicles, some of them blocking the road and so on. These are some of the reasons which have been advanced as why they might have been arrested. Please, please, let's get serious in this country. As far back in 1972, when we have even gone through military errors, and I, I salute the judges of old, and I'm sure they'll be turning in their graves and asking how did we get here? How did our jurisprudence depreciate so low that today lawyers cannot even boldly speak about law unless it is done on partisan basis to suit the whims and caprices of a judge? As far back in 1972, in the case versus Asante versus, um, the Asante versus the Republic, cited as 1972 two Ghana law reports, specifically at page 177 to 179, a truck truck driver was on record to have beaten the police, not just beaten the police, tore his uniform. Everybody said beating the police was a crime. And just like we are hearing in this democracy, <laughs> that merely because you confronted the police, you've committed a law. The court said that. The church road driver did no wrong, and that the police had the duty to effect a lawful arrest, arrest in accordance with law, which means that, first of all, you must tell the person you are arresting in the language he understands. If he says he understands Chinese, you must bring a Chinese interpreter to tell the person that you are being arrested for this. You must tell the person his right. In this case, none of these things were done. And just like in 1970s, when people were saying a church driver had beaten the police and whatever, the man walked free. Because why? When there is a duty imposed at law on you, you do not behave as if you are with your colonial masters. All right. And look at what happened yesterday when the president went to the UN General right. Assembly we'll, to, we'll deliver, come to, that. to deliver we'll come a to speech. That. We'll come to Ghanaians that. who we'll indirectly will not be affected by this, they will not drink our water. We'll they are that. protesting. And let we'll me conclude to and say that today it is the 50 protesters who are not politically aligned who are behind bars. 30 seconds. Today, it is the people who are calling for the good of their country who have been arrested because government wants to put fear in people not to protest. I just want to tell the MPP that we have records of everything they are saying about this. All right. We are keeping them. All right. And when power changes, let no one come and preach democracy. But we will do so the right thing. But they have set the precedent. But, but we, oh, the, the law, right thing should yes, always be law, done. We like All the right, precedent. Let, let's me come to Nanaya. I think I saw you tweet about that, so I'll put that on your Facebook page. Um, let me come to you, um, Nanaya. I don't think I've heard you speak about this at all. Um, we've seen the news, and this is where we are now. What do you make of all of it? No, good morning. And good morning to your viewers, and good morning to my auntie and my sisters. Now I am a, that's why I've been, I'm a bit overwhelmed. I am a bit, I, I, I'm not too, I don't know what is going on. I saw the protesters on TV and there were not many. And now 50 yeah. have been uh, arrested. Remanded. So it means almost <laughs> right. all of them, isn't almost, it? Almost yeah, almost almost. We don't know how many people actually No, but, but, but dearly, the point is that what were the charges? I, I, I've seen some of the charges that they even demonstrated without an a acts of lawless. Uh, they were engaged in acts of lawlessness. So what, what, what exactly were they engaged in that demanded that they should be remanded? And also, we need to be very, very careful about some of these things. They were protesting against Galamse. So you shouldn't give the impression that you don't <laughs> like what they were, they were doing. Because seriously, I, I am one, and there was a little girl walking around. What was she doing there? 
she was with her grandmother. And so when her grandmother was detained, she was also picked up along with her. But they were later released. Detained. The young girl was detained. They were released. Really? No, no, no. Let's, Shortly let, after. No, no. Let's, let's settle it. The young girl, that baby walking so, there. So they were arrested. That trauma. So they were arrested. But we cannot say they were detained because we didn't see that. We saw the arrest. No, but why do you even arrest a small girl? They, they let them go shortly after. What, whatever it is, it is traumatic. Yes. Why do you arrest a little girl who came with a grandmother? Maybe they don't have a nanny at home. There is no care. And the grandmother also wants to be part of the dispensation. So why do you arrest a little girl? That one is unpardonable. A little girl who came with a mother has been arrested because of what? I mean, seriously, we are not safe. Somebody who has a kidney disease. I remember during the Occupy, um, is it Occupy? Uh, no, no, they are the, the one Occupy that they did. Ghana. Occupy Ghana. One of them had kidney disease. Now he's off, so we can talk about it. Kesley Hayford. And he, 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 was he arrested? He was not arrested. So why do you put in, in, in custody somebody who has kidney disease has to go and do dialysis? Without dialysis, that person would die. And you have kept the person. The fact that the person has kidney disease doesn't mean that the person cannot be part of anything that goes on. And this protestation is about Galamse, something that is killing us. So, couldn't the, the police bring some law and order? When we had the enough, uh, uh, enough is enough demonstration, the huge crowd, nobody was arrested. Because there was order. The police themselves, I mean, they were there making sure that everything is orderly. So what happened that this little crowd, they could not manage them and had to get to this point. Now, you see, when these things happen, people become afraid. It's as if we are no longer in a democracy. This is our country, Ghana, and we should not do this to our own. I don't know what it is. I don't know because I want to see the charge sheets. Because if you don't see the chat sheet, then you wouldn't know exactly. I haven't seen the chat sheets anywhere. But you see, I've been so overwhelmed with the whole thing going on that I'm wondering that what is it? What crime did somebody die? Eight people died in 2020 elections. Eight Ghanaians. Nobody has done anything about it. Nobody has said a word. Nobody has been arrested. We are going into another election. So do we have four legs good, two legs good, four legs bad in this country. Some people are better than others. I mean, it is so unfortunate. If somebody commits a crime, I don't see why the person should not be punished. If there is a crime, clearly there is a crime. But even a criminal who has committed murder has rights. As Beatrice was saying, I'm not a lawyer, but she was talking about the, all the legal things. And it's good she started it. Because you should have access to, to a lawyer. A lawyer of your choice. If you don't have, then maybe they'll bring you legal aid, somebody from legal aid, to represent you. Before you even speak or do anything, you should have access to your relatives. They should know where you are. A pregnant woman, what did she really do? Because if the police should, should have been able to see that A did this. B did that. But to bundle so many people as if everybody was lawless. It does not make sense to me. As if everybody who was there, I don't think everybody who was there was lawless. I well, don't. we haven't seen the chat sheet also, yes. but we have been told about, or well, from what their lawyers have said, mm -hmm. that a lot of them were charged for a conspiracy to commit the crime. So even though they, so you're asking that they should individually be charged. Yes, but a conspiracy, yes. I think the conspiracy charge allows for all the people who are seen to have been I am saying that conspiracy to commit a crime is huge. Mm -hmm. It can be it, it, it treason. If you want to do a coup, it's conspiracy to commit a crime. If you want to, I mean, go and steal with somebody, the person is in the act and you are not part of it, but you conspired, it's there. Um, to kill somebody, to do so many things, and you are part of it, it's a mm. conspiracy. So what, what is it? It's a bit huge. What crime exactly What's did What is the substantive they, offense? What is the substantive? I like that. What is the substantive offense? What crime? Do you get me? If they were conspiring to commit a crime, what is that crime that they are conspiring to commit?
Okay. We are all not, I mean, Galamse is killing us. Galamse, it is, it is not easy. So, this morning, eh, one of my kids asked me that, so how is Galamse, all these rivers that have been polluted, and how are we going to revive them, bring them, bring mm. them back? Hmm? I just had to give an answer. But truly in my heart. What did you say? I just said that when we stop the Galamse. The water will come back. With time. We can we can restore it. All right. Do you understand? But in my heart, I also ask myself a question: That can we do it? Is it possible? All right. Because you see, now I beg you, our freedoms should not be curtailed. And mm -hmm. I want to add, uh, tell um, Beatrice. Beatrice that Nanado started doing demonstration in 1978, not Kumi Prekum, the PMFG. Was he ever arrested? He wasn't arrested. All right. PMFJ, he was there. He was beating. I see. Yes, he ended up in my father's house with sauce on his feet. Oh, you were there? Yes, I was there. I used to clean the sauce for oh, them. Oh, I see. So 1978, he started not today. I see. Yes. But, but, yes, it, 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 they met You remember my, too? Yes. yes. For they were all their fathers. People's movement for freedom, for freedom and, and justice. justice. Yes. Okay. All of them, they, uh, his father was Was it there. a partisan demonstration? It, was, it wasn't. It wasn't. It was a call for mm -hmm. change. For a champion. A champion style. Just like this. I see. Yes. Yeah. Just like this. <laughs> exactly. Just like this. Just like this. That's the same Interesting. Right. Yes. Let's speak to this, <laughs> let's speak to this um, demonstration <laughs> and the many issues that have arisen since. Um, good morning, Ghana. Good morning to all our viewers. Um, this was a demonstration that was supposed to be peaceful. Um, just a small group of people. So we wouldn't have expected to read or hear what we are reading and hearing now of the violence and the police brutalities and the violation of human rights. It's unfortunate that this had to happen. But I'm beginning to um, believe those who have this perception that our police are actually policing with some form of biases. And when you are a, a police force that has a bias, invariably what you normally would do is to go around um, giving in high heartedness. You, you, you kind of like do the, 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 the worst that you, 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 you can actually inflict on citizens. I didn't see the reason why anyone should be slapped. I didn't see the reason why anybody should have been manhandled. I didn't see why they had to pick everybody. Um, we are living in, in, in a country today that it seems government wants to gag everyone because this is a form of gagging people. Um, you realize that at the end of it all, only two people apparently were present um, the last day. It was because people were scared of coming out to speak their minds. We shouldn't do that. Um, we should be able to voice out our grievances and the government is supposed to listen. Um, I think that there is something wrong with our policing in this country. We are still living in a certain mentality, a colonial mentality, um, where the police feel that they have it all and they have to lord it over the civilians. No, 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 that's not the issue. Um, I'm going to just suppose that as against what happens during the racial um, unrest in the UK. Uh, we didn't see, we saw what the police stood up to. People were hitting them with all manner of things. People were barging in on them, harassing them, and they stood firm. What they were doing was protecting lives and property. That was all they were doing. But at the end of the day, they used technology to lift up everybody. They arrested everyone from their various homes. CCTV cameras, the footages everywhere. Even those who went individually. Yes, they went around and picked everybody else and some went to jail. They were, they were all prosecuted and jailed. If there was any crime being committed, the police should have been able to use other means, but not manhandle people, not go and just arrest everybody that was there, even passers-by. I, I, I found that to be very ridiculous. I didn't think that that was a good um, thing to do. I also think that going forward, I don't know the kinds of people that we are getting into the police service, but then we should remove statistic behaviors from within our police service. Um, there are some people who take delight in inflicting pain on people. So at the end of the day, when things like this happen, all they think of is how to inflict pain on innocent people. There was no need for anyone to be manhandled. Um, taking them on, going to court without representation of their lawyers, I think that is a wrong thing to do. It is against the very principles that we believe in. 
there is no reason why someone should be arrested and not given at least the opportunity to speak to a family member or to get a lawyer or at least be given medication and food and water. They did not kill anyone. So why, why do you have to maltreat them that way? They are, they are Ghanaians. At the end of the day, I want to also tell the police that we are in this together. The water we drink, your family members drink the same water. At the end of the day, when you take off those uniforms, you are civilians just like us. And you should also remember that at, at the close of day, when your time is up and you leave the service, you come and abide by the same rules that you are you're, you're, you're attacking us on now. So it is just imperative that the Ghana Police Service should live a life that is worthy <coughs> of the uniforms that they are wearing. I, I looked at the group. I wasn't so interested because for me, Galamse is something that has come and we have to speak about it. Mm. Um, if we look at the Frimpomboating report, report, for instance, it just tells us that there is something wrong. And we know those who have created this problem and we have left them. So if a small bunch of people decide that, look, we want to voice out or air out our, our grievances, the least we could have done was to listen to them, not go beating them or, or giving them all those kinds. And of course, when you are protesting, sometimes you go overboard. They did maybe go overboard. I, I, for one, I was thinking, well, why did they have to go close to a hospital? Because 37 military hospital is quite so close. Mm -hmm. But then when you're angry, sometimes you do all manner of things. But it's left to those people who are in charge, that is the police, to use the, 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 the intelligence that they have Come to be management. able even to pick up the very people that they think were going to cause the trouble. Okay. But not wait for them to do and it. Bundle and bundle them all up. Yeah, and bundle everybody else. Right. Uh, else on now, board. Ellen, I'm not sure if the MPP has spoken about this publicly or officially, but let me ask you, what, what is the party's position, specifically on the alleged human rights violations of the protesters who were arrested? denying them access to food and water for two days, access to legal counsel of their choice. We told some of them who are sick have not been allowed to even collect medicines from their family members. The NPP responded when they decided to tear down our paraphernalia. It looks like these people decided to go on a, dem a demonstration <clears throat> against Galamse, which it is in their right to do, but decided to also do extra by tearing down the paraphernalia of the MPP. And so <clears throat> our youth organizer and a few young people, actually they tell the police that if you are doing your demonstration, do your demonstration. But the fact that we've put up our billboards and it's election year and you go at our billboards, what has the MPP as a party done to you? So as for us, uh, the MPP is not about to go and release any press statement on this matter because we don't know about them. All we also heard is that they are also um, up and about doing their demonstrations, which they are allowed to do, but they decided that in their demonstrations they will go at the NPP. For us, we are the, we've left it for the police to deal with it. We have so told the police that going forward, everybody is allowed to put up their paraphernalia. All other political parties have put it up. Nobody should go on a demonstration and go and pull down ours. That is, I can say, the only interest of the NPP in this matter. The rest of the matter, then you ask a few questions. Um, I've heard quite interesting stories about uh, the, the president, Nanado Danko Ekufuado, and years before, I think most of us on this table were, were born and how he, he had been at the forefront of demonstrations, and how he was beaten. He has been hurt a few times. So we have to check the, the, the Ghana Police Service and their reaction to, what do we call it, protesters. This particular protest, the Ghana Police Service, in my estimation, did very well. Did very well? Yes, they did. In, why in which why aspect? am I saying they did yeah. very well? We've had protests in this country. At least I remember the Let My Vote Count protest. I was part, but I wasn't in the forefront. And at that time, if I remember, I still had a baby. So I joined them, but I left earlier and went home. By the end of the day, we saw people who were beaten, and it was under. The presidency, the presidency of uh, ex-president John Mahama. So if you're going to be blaming political parties and precedents for things that have happened during protests, we should start with former president Mahama and how he allowed people to be beaten to the extent that one person lost his eye. And when that happened, and we said the police have hurt the person, the person's eye 
as, 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 as the person has lost his eye, he's in hospital. We got the apartheid apparatchiks telling us that it was ketchup. And that the person was lying. We had NDC people sitting in the media telling us that the people are exaggerating. We have people who were beaten, proper beaten with horse whips in this country under the presidency of His, His Excellency, former President John Muhammad. So if we want to talk about how <coughs> protest, protesters are treated, I think we should put the, 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 the we should remove the political access or the precedents out of it. Because definitely, I don't think that President Mahama asked the police at that time to go beating up those protesters. And so you cannot tell me that His Excellency Nana Kufuado asked people, uh, the police, to go and beat up these ones. And these police, they didn't beat them up. All they did was to arrest people. I haven't okay. seen even one person be beaten. Okay. I haven't, no, you didn't interrupt <clears throat> when they were speaking. Let me finish. You, I didn't see even I, all I the videos, okay. all the videos that we have seen. I haven't seen anybody being whipped with a horse whipped. Okay. What it says is that they decided that one, according to the police, they were supposed to go by a certain route and route. They didn't do it. Okay. Then you decide to go near a, 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 a hospital, a referral hospital that Ghanaians use. And we had some Ghanaians who were protesting that, look, move your stuff. Let us get access to the hospital because we need to get our people in there. You had these protesters telling them that they should clear off and that Ghanaians are animals. So if some of the animals die, then they're in a scene. So when you behave like this and you see... Um, vivid signs and actions of them trying to annoy the police, going at the police, and every, the police were very calm about it. What they do was to round you up and pick you and send you to, to the police station. And when they send them there, they have sent them to court, or they haven't. They have been remanded by a court of uh, competent jurisdiction. So what exactly is the problem now? The, the problem, problem is, is that, that some that say that they don't have their drugs. The first, the question, I have to, that... the first question I will ask is, the... the According to their lawyer that I heard to say, he said some of them have been sent to the police hospital. Two of them. Two of them. Um, are those two the, two the people who needed the drugs? No. So the others who needed drugs, I'm sure the police will allow the, 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 okay. the, the, so let me the doctors you. to take care of them and give them the drugs you. that they need. The problem we is that... We are just making, I, for, in, my, in my career, in my, when I look at everything that's going on, I just think that we are just, we are just trying to, to, to just escalate this, this issue when there's no issue to be escalated. All right. When you go on a protest and you don't do what you're supposed to do and the police decide to arrest you, you go through the process. All right. So, Ellen, let me catch you up. These are a few issues that have arised. One, the protesters who were rounded up and arrested, according to reports, were denied access to their legal counsel. Which, according to whose report? According to all reports that have re been received from their lawyers, mm. from the press, and even some of their family members who were eventually able to speak to them. And while they were being brought to court, if you heard the news stories or if you heard the protesters while they spoke, because some of them found that their only opportunity to talk. So while they were being brought to court, they were saying the things that had happened. We heard Amma Governor say she had not been given food or water for two days. They were not allowed to speak to their lawyers, which is a, a very basic fundamental human rights requirement in the Constitution. These are human rights violations. These are just a few of the issues which have been reported. So when you say that the only interest of the NPP is in the paraphernalia that were destroyed, it begs the question that what about human rights? What's human rights? I've just listed, they are the ones who are saying listed, it. The, 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 protesters. Listed, the protesters are the ones saying it. I it know. hasn't been proved by anybody else apart from me. We are hearing from their report. The lawyers that they say they haven't seen, mm -hmm. those are the lawyers telling us yes. that their human rights have been... What's the evidence that what they are saying is true? That's Why should we take the word of somebody who can take uh, the, the, the keys of a, of, the, of, the, of a police guy and run away and throw it away well, and run away? We haven't heard from him. And who, well, it's a soul group. Why should we take their word so they are over, lying. over... Well, why should I believe them? Why should I believe them? Do you what have, is their do you have evidence? Any reason not to? I have every reason what, not to because obviously not to? they are a group of, in my estimation, they are a group of hooligans who decided to go on a protest and misbehave. So when you come and tell me that uh, the police have sat on your human rights, did you what see the, the pregnant what woman? Is, what, I didn't did you see, see the pregnant, pregnant okay, woman? Okay, so, so I'll tell you. One of the women mm -hmm. who was arrested mm -hmm. with her husband mm -hmm. is pregnant. Okay. And she says that she was not protesting. She was just present observing. Oh. And she was picked up. Okay. She's currently in police custody. Mm -hmm. All right. While pregnant. Another person who says he was on his way from mass, obviously dressed from church, white kaftan, was also picked up. 
though he was constantly screaming on top of his lungs that he was not a protester. He has also been arrested. Okay? You don't see anything wrong with this picture. You no. think they're all hooligans? No. I don't see anything wrong with, with it because they are saying that this is who they are. What is the evidence that what they are saying is true? What that, is the evidence? What is the because evidence that they were not fed? You are, you are, yes, what's the evidence? What's the evidence that they were not allowed to evidence? see their doctor? What is the evidence? What because you call it? Their you are, these are a group of people who are making accusations against the police that when they were picked and taken into custody, they were treated this way. Nobody has count, come out with any counter evidence. Why should I believe them? Because uh -huh. their lawyers have spoken to they us. They are lawyers that publicly. they do not have access to. Listen. Their lawyers have spoken to us publicly. They said they don't that have they were access. denied no. They access. said they don't yes. have access they were to denied their lawyers. Access so how, until they don't, how, how are those lawyers going to believe them? Until these are a they group, arrived no, in court these yesterday. These are a group of people who got up, decided to inconvenience everybody on a day. And by their acts, and by their deeds, and by their actions, you know that there are people who don't have good intentions. They don't so, have good oh, intentions. Yes. So Do you know what they were protesting against? If the police have arrested you, and you come back and tell me that the police didn't give you food. The police didn't get, let you get access to your lawyer. You are pregnant. And so uh, I should believe what you are saying over, well, the police haven't said anything about that. But the police, for me, they are going through every action that they should go through. Go through, put them through uh, the court system. The court has remind, uh, rem reminded them. And if they have a problem, that is why they have their lawyers. Their lawyers said they've been to what? Uh, they sent a report to... Um, Shraj. Shraj. Shraj is the only institution that I know of that can determine whether human rights, their human rights were infringed upon. Until Shraj brings out a report, I still consider them a bunch of hooligans who decided to inconvenience everybody in that general area on that Saturday, including people going to seek health care at the 37 uh, military hospital. So for them to now come and try and turn it up that the police are abusing them. Do they know what police abuse of, of protesters are? Well, we saw we were in the this police country. shoving them, screaming at them to shut up, on, hitting them. Under the there, presidency, there are live videos on TV. Under the presidency of Mr., uh, uh, former President Joe Mahama, the police beat people. Does that make it right? We have heard his spokesperson of whom Beatrice is her deputy, sitting on news file telling us that the police should have used, the police used reasonable force at that time. So I repeat it, the police are using reasonable force now with the uh, processes. At least they were good enough, they didn't hurt them physically. So if you come and tell me that you are not giving food, seriously? You are not giving food. What? That they don't. That you they, they go on a protest. They could, you go demand. on such a protest, you would inconvenience everybody. They went Nobody to the saying that you shouldn't Galamse. go. Yes. Nobody said they shouldn't go about uh, 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 for a protest against Galamse. With what they did and their attitude on that day and all the things that they did, they have rather taken off the attention of the Galamse issues and now we are discussing their unruly behavior. Because you cannot tell me that it is what right. What we are discussing actually uh, is the violation me. of their human you rights. You cannot tell That's me. That's what we are no, discussing. You cannot tell me that it is right for a protester to be pushing at the police. It is right for a protester to be putting stones okay. in the road. It is right for a protester to tell people who are going for I don't think anyone has said that, that though. So why are we not discussing yes. it? So the, the point is that if citizens are being unruly, as you said, law it enforcement... Is not citizens, please. They are not citizens. They're, it is not all citizens. Citizens I, I, who decided to go on and if citizens have gone on a protest yes. and they are doing things which, in your estimation, are acts of lawlessness, the law enforcement agency, as trained police people, are expected to oh, act yeah. in a certain way. And while acting, I expected to uphold the human rights of these people who they have arrested at all times because their human rights are guaranteed by the Constitution. And a law enforcement agency, above all people, no, I expect that you know that. I'm still asking. I'm still telling you that what, what you know is what? your measure for saying that? Uh, why do you believe them that they are... Ellen has spoken for 15 yeah, minutes. Yeah, the the yeah, police human has rights consistently have been, giving us statements since And the police happened. said that that's and what happened. they haven't said in any of their statements that these human rights violations which are alleged are untrue. And, and, 
alleged. That is, the school they said that. Untrue. You they, said they alleged. Said Nobody has disproved the their allegations. None, so until, the police has not uh, come out to say Why should the police untrue? even come out and come and say that it is whether untrue or not? Because it's that is why their people the said, service, that is why the people said they sent it to Shraj. So let's wait for Shraj. But I'm not about to believe a bunch of hooligans. Let me be honest. Why do you keep calling them hooligans? Because they are. Let my vote count. Were they hooligans? Let my vote count didn't go blocking. Let my vote count didn't go blocking hospital waste. Let my vote count didn't go putting stones in their way, preventing people from accessing health care. They didn't do that. But they were beaten. All right. I'm, I'm, not, sure, I'm not sure if um, we have enough time to go to our second topic, because it looks like we have to stay yeah. a little longer yes. on, on this one. But let me read a few more messages coming in from you. Um, now, please, as the MPP woman, she says she's a mother, right? She seems to justify everything about the behavior it's of the police. Is she talking about retaliation? Mm. And Okay, and that's from Chief Mante. And then, um, this one from Selassie says, wow, so it's a question of equalization, equalization. now. That's what we are trying to do. Okay, uh, good morning. Musa Abatoa sends a very long one. I'll read some of it. Um, all right. By the way, the police mistreatment of democracy have protesters cut saw on the face of democracy, especially under the president who is... Um, okay, note of expressing his concern through, who is noted for expressing concerns through demonstrations, and, and you go on, but I can't read all of it. Let me read this one from Notedria, who says, Are we short of handcuffs? We handcuff a man to a woman, demonstrators, damage control police statements. When we hear and see them on video, refusing to allow even medication formulations, is this policing? The excesses are unfortunate and must be properly addressed. However, the individual charges must be examined in court. What happened after the military barbarism in Ashaiman? Any sanctions, any compensation? Hmm. Freedom and justice. All right. Um, I'll read a few more of your messages as we go. But let me come back um, um, to, to my guests in studio. Um, Ellen is saying that, well, <laughs> I don't even know which of the things she said to address. But, but basically, she finds nothing wrong with anything that, that has been done. And that's what the police have done is totally justifiable. Um, Beatrice, let me come back to you. You're a lawyer, and you've been vocal about some of the specific acts of the police. Must we wait to hear that any of the things that have been said are untrue before we proceed to, I, I, I don't even know, we, 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 we proceed to analyze the issues before us? All the things that the Democracy Hub protesters have said have not been denied by the police <laughs> from a legal point of view. Is, is that enough to go by? Well, what I want to say is that it was my prayer that when anybody goes to law school, they actually get the opportunity to finish law school and be a lawyer, and not just be a lawyer, but have a brush with our criminal justice system. I've had the benefits of representing some police officers in private practice. And any time they have even an internal disciplinary action, you could see how they, they shiver and how they shake because they know what they do to suspects and accused persons. And so even as police officers, when they have a brush with the law, and very great jurists have made the argument that we should even be advancing non-custodial sentence for a reason. And so when you sit down and you hear that this is not just a police brutality that has been meted out, we would have called the police out. We condemn every brutality in the past. But the police for the first time have not just proceeded beyond events at the demonstration, but have actually arrested 50 citizens. We are being told they are not citizens. Mm -hmm. You have to be an MPP person. To, I'm so sad and scandalized. And I understand why some of the law lecturers keep calling me to explain themselves anytime I come on the show and I leave. It is, it is an eyesore that Ellen will attempt reading LLB. She and me. you mentioned my name. <laughs> and you, you are you going insulting your whole back. 
You are coming L -L -B. with me. Madam, talk about your matter. And Don't let us go this I'll way. Give you a chance. I no no no. I'll She's coming at me. She's mentioning my name. The fact that I have decided to put L L B on hold. Did you say that? Did you did you did you did you you anybody that said no 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 I'll let her finish because she decided to come at me. And when you come at me, you receive it. Hang on. That you can insult your whole profession. Okay. Tell them that they are they are a bunch of foolish people led by their leaders. You are talking about lawyers as you sit here. You are not you are not sad. You are not scandalized about how you treat your own profession. You are talking about me. I am not a lawyer. I attempted. Okay. And I put it on hold. Okay. I have done my my bit in my education. You are a lawyer. You need the law. Okay. You work with the law. Okay. But you, you okay. Solve bitches, all bitches and Ellen, my... both of us, both of us. And then you are coming at me. Ellen, hey, bitches. Madam, let's, well. let's, stick let's stick to the issue. Let's stick to the issue. My reference is Let's come to the at issues. me. Don't come you at made, my you profession. Made a point. All Don't right. come at my educational accomplishment. All right. Because as you sit here, All right. if we decide to go that way, today you won't get All up. right, it's okay. You let's, have insulted both of your us, whole back. Both of us, both of us, let's, let's stick to it. the issues. Let's stick to the issues uh -huh. and not refer to personal... Um, Thank you. Then I'm we can talk about I'm it. saying that... Nashoko, you Beaches, have had the benefit Beaches, of meeting Beaches. an LLB. Let's, let's stick to the I'm issue. saying that when you have had the benefit of coming into contact with law, and the study of law. The same benefit you, you had. By that you are now a full lawyer. Ellen. You can insult your whole back. Ellen. So don't even go there. Ellen. Don't even use that as an alarm. Ellen. Move Ellen. On. All right. Move on. We expect your you don't have any respect your, your for microphone your is you off. You don't have any respect your for your Your microphone is you off. You don't have any respect for your, your, your Ellen, your, your, I have just your told Beatrice to stick to the issue. And now you are going. She didn't mention my name. Move on. I have told her. I have told her well, to on. stick to the issue, and now you are bringing it back. All right, so let, let, let's let go on. discussion yeah, is that it's it's stick to the issue. It is oh, my expectation, no, Ellen. It is my expectation Nanaya. that how no, we approach no, issues no. against protesters will be different from lay people, because you know why? The first thing they teach you in law school, criminal law, is the principle of legality, the rights of an accused person. And they don't just teach you, you are trained in a way to see the law from a certain perspective. And that is how so you that, Ellen, you talk to everybody. Ellen. So that, so that we are not discussing the guilt or otherwise of the protesters. That substantive law in itself is as important as procedural law. And that is why when I have an issue with you, I cannot just write a letter and take it to the court and say that I have an issue with Nashoko. Why? Because how I appear and come to court to report you or complain about you is as important as the content of the complaint. And so even if the protesters vandalized, an assertion which they have said, and we have not seen anything like they vandalizing property. We are asking, is the justification that because of orders from above, the protesters should not be released? First of all, the police breached their right to the 48 hour rule. They were never taken to court in 48 hours. Within that, they were not given food. They were not given their modification. They were not given anything as a shrine in the constitution. And you know what the constitution says? It says that where a police officer goes outside the remit of the procedure and breaches it, when you bring an action against a police officer, they are personally liable. This time, the state will not be liable for it because... The state anticipate that you will have some police officers who are not there to serve. So that the state will not be vicariously liable for these things. And so here, the police officers will be personally liable. Why? Because we do not want an arbitrary abuse of power. And what is the crime of these protesters? That's something that affects all of us, Galamse. That MPP officials are involved in Galamse. Allegedly. Not allegedly. They are all members. Moon to me, the minister has said Moon to me was mining illegally. So where is that legend? These are things that facts. None of them have even come out to be able to debunk these things. We've had galamses in the past. Never, even in 2016, all the rivers we are 
complaining about. We're all clean. Never. We are having kidney issues. We are having people are dying. And what is there? We could not go on the streets to demonstrate. We had young people who are fed up with the system. Mm. As we speak, 1.9 million young people cannot find job. The dollar is almost 17 cities. People can simply not afford basic necessities of life. When you wake up in the morning, the number of people, including lawyers, exactly. medical doctors, who cannot even afford to live in the country, their only remedy that they have is the ability to exercise their democratic rights. That is voice out. And even that, they are being gagged. And when you say, they will say they are hooligans. All right. I want to say to every young person watching me. Are you concluding? Yes. That let nobody gag you into submission. These were the people who were asking Nkrumah to write letters to seek our independence. That we didn't need a self-government now. We needed a self-government within the shortest possible time. They are use of the word possible, very historical. These are the people who said that Nkrumah should not have declared the positive change because it would amount to you being a hooligan positive today. Action. A positive action. Today we are here. They are the people who have benefited most by stealing the resources of this country than anybody. Look at the Auditor General report. Look at the corruption everywhere. Look at how the president would dole right. out $10 million to their daughters. You think the people on the streets, if they had the benefits Akufado's children had, with $10 million sitting in their account for no work done, you think they will be on the streets? They will be riding in their Bugattis. So if the people cannot even have access to basic necessities, the least they can do is to vent. And these were some of the things we were taking for granted under President Mahama, where people could speak their mind. Manasseh Azul, everybody could criticize, and nobody arrested you. At best, you were even provided with security. You sacrificed this, and you gave right. it to this government. All right, Beatrice. Um, Nanaya. You see, it is unfortunate for anybody to refer to people who are protesting for a cause as hooligans. I don't think that when Anado was protesting in 1978, when he was protesting against VAT in Kumipreko, the group of people who did it, when protestations were going on for our independence, anybody described them as hooligans. Ghanaians are Ghanaians. Ghanaians are citizens of this country, and they have a right to protest. If something went wrong, fine. But the police should have the ability to be able to deal with crowd issues. Because certainly when you go on demonstrations, even abroad, some of these things happen. You have seen people burning the flag of the UK because they do not believe in certain things that the UK government is doing. That does not mean that the people, the rights of the people should be destroyed. The word is not even coming to be violated. It is wrong, as I said before. These things, when it happens, you charge them individually because you were there. As you said, somebody was coming from mass, and the person was arrested, somebody in Jalabia, who goes to a demonstration in Jalabia. Look at that little girl. You could see that she was visibly traumatized. Do you understand? Because, I mean, if people are demonstrating for a good cause, and some of these excesses happen. You need to find a way to deal with it. You need to remember that you are dealing with human beings, human beings who are Ghanaians. And we should be treated as Ghanaians for whatever it's worth. We should be treated as Ghanaians because, you see, even when you go into our constitution, directive principles of state policy, this government has violated about 90% of it. And we are all quiet. Because we do not know, for lack of knowledge, my people perish. We are all quiet. The underpinnings of our existence is in, in, in that chapter. And I believe that the media should start talking about it. What are our rights? You cannot just get up and violate somebody's right, and you don't have to equalize. We are moving on. Do you get me? In this country, we need to move on and improve day by day. Yeah. So that if a new government can, what happened before we do? Because that is why we change governments. And if something happened before, we move on. We say that never again should it happen. As you are saying, that never again should any person die because of an election. We move on. We become, we, we, we should be, we have to have a lot of empathy towards the people that we deal with. Look, when you go to London, UK, Germany, Netherlands, 
all over the world if you are lost. The safest person you would speak to and walk to is a policeman. But in Ghana, if you see a policeman, you are running away. If you see a policeman coming towards you, you are running away. Or even if you want to speak to a policeman for some kind of help, nah, they are so hostile. They are so hostile. The way they will speak to one of them spoke to me and I said, you can't speak to me like that. Because if I'm not older than you, you don't know me too. I'm somebody in my small corner. So if you are in uniform, you can, I, told him, I told him plainly. I said, you can never, never speak to me like that. But I am saying that we need to understand, the police need to understand that they are there for the people. It's a police Ghana. service, not a police force. It's a, for, it's a it's, force. It's a police service. It's, it's a police service. It's, it's supposed to be I mean, it's a police it's, service. I, mean, I see it as a police force. Uh, uh, well, yes, they are armed. Yeah. Um, it's unfortunate. <clears throat> Excuse me. It seems that there's so much equalization going on. Um, every time you, you, you turn on the radio or you listen to discussions, it's always, they did it. NDC did it, so we are also doing it. MPP did it, so we are also doing it. This whole question of equalization must stop. And the polarization in this country must also stop. Um, we are one people. It's, it is not right for us to think that some people are hooligans just because they decided to go on the streets no. to, to, to vent out their anger. Galamse is real. Galamse is destroying the environment. And yesterday was a black day for us because at the end of the day, our president was in faraway UN trying to get people to listen to environmental issues. And here were young people demonstrating and being arrested, being harassed, harassed being kept in, 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 in cells and whatnot against their wish. It is not right. At the end of the day, one thing that I, I was happy about was that I saw women also stand up. And I'm so happy for those women because it is beginning to show that women are beginning to take that, that bold step. Yeah. That governance is not just for the men, yeah. but we are also, in, within our own rights, able to stand up and, and speak for the good of this country. It's unfortunate that this thing should be coming out about the police. It's always the police, the police, the police. I think that the IGP must uh, go back to the drawing board talk to his policemen, make sure that they understand what it means for people to start complaining about human rights. You right. have to, they have to work within the limits of the constitution of this country. Thank and you, Rodlin. I'm, I'm coming to, to you, Ellen, but um, my producers, I'm, I'm going to beg you to give me two minutes to allow um, Rodlin to talk about uh, Alan Chamartin's request or his, his joining um, the quest for the voters register to be audited. So I'm, I'm begging for those two minutes. Um, after, after Ellen has spoken. All right, Ellen. I still stand on it that every Ghanaian is allowed to demonstrate. It is enshrined in our constitution. But when you go on a demonstration, you also don't go and misbehave. You do not block access to a hospital that the general public uses. And then when we talk about it, you tell us that we are animals. So if some of us die, there's no problem. And then when the police arrest you, you come up with well, in my estimation, cooked up stories about your, 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 your supposedly human rights inf infractions. I still stand by it. Those citizens that went out on Saturday to go and, 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 go and do what is constitutionally mandated of them, as in go and uh, demonstrate against the issues that you, you didn't want, decided to be hooligans. And they decided to make all of us, everybody who was using that area that day, uncomfortable. They decided that they were not going to let people who were going to seek for health care get the health care. And then they would turn around and come and tell us that they also need health care. But when you didn't allow somebody to go into the hospital, you blocked the way. And when we spoke about it, you insulted the person. Those people, those young people who went out, the 50 or so of them who went out to do that, I still stand on it, that they behaved as hooligans. And the police has every right to arrest them. The police are improving on how they manage demonstrations. Because we've had instances in this country when this situation, you would have been beating black and blue. Oh. But this one, they didn't touch them. They just arrested them. And oh. they are going through the processes. So I still stand by it. They behaved as hooligans. And when you decide to behave as a hooligan, the police will deal with you. That is what our law says. All right, Ellen. Um, Rodlin, yes. let, let's speak about the audits that... You have joined. Yes. We have joined yes. the, um, the audit, that is the Alliance for Revolutionary Change, together with the Movement for Change, have joined um, the call for something to be done um, about the voters register. So we are 
calling on the establishment of a high-level technical working group, which will um, comprise of the representatives of all the interested parties, that is, all those who have been um, given the nod by the EC to contest for this year's um, elections, presidential elections, together with certain consultants to sit around a table to discuss um, the, the issue. We are also asking that um, all those who have um, evidence of whatever compromise situations the EC might have done to bring it on board and all members um, of this um, working group should have a copy of, of the, um, the complaints and together they will be audited and then we'll find um, a way forward. We are also asking that the 2020 voters register be made available. The limited registration um, since um, information since 2021 and the voter transfers that have been done since 2021 and then the special voters list since 2020 till date should also be made available from the EC's office. All right. And all these things should be given to each member of the working group all right. to study and We are on stolen time. Yeah, so we, we, we do have... Um, that, that's, that's all our time. I, I wish yes, we could all discuss this, but unfortunately...